Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Lee Batsakis, founder and co-creator of Apollo and Artemis Beauty by Equality. And you are listening to the Business Serum Podcast, where I'll bring you stories of people who have impacted the world through their unique business experiences and how they have utilized their past and excavated their own life story to master the art of the ever-changing sales strategy, beginning with themselves. Because if you can close yourself on you, you can close yourself on anyone. Pamela, thank you so much for being with us today. You have such an extensive resume. Well, why don't you first give us a quick little overview of exactly what it is that you do and a little bit of your background? Sure. Thank you so much, Laura Lee. I really appreciate you having me. Um, Pamela Worth Barnhill, I've got a consulting company, Strategic Growth Advisory, as well as a supplement company, Hello Health. Uh, My background uh, is in manufacturing, management consulting, hospitality, and real estate. It's been a very interesting journey, but a a lot of fun things along the way. Yeah, that's one of the things I'm very fascinated with. And that's part of the reason why I create the business serum is because I think people think that there's always just one. They don't realize that there's all these different pieces on your journey, right? And the trajectory. So I love that you you do. You have this mosaic, if you will, of a background. Um, so how, where did you begin your career? Was it in the health industry? No, believe it or not, straight out of college, I majored in economics and mathematics and uh, went to go work for Motorola. I had always been told, and, and I think this has changed over the generations, I had always been told, go to the biggest company you can. You can always go smaller later, but you can't go the other way. I'm not really sure that that's true anymore. Uh, but anyway, the biggest company I could get my get myself into was, was Motorola, um, and particularly in the semiconductor area. So that was kind of a uh, my, my first foray into manufacturing and what it looks like in a clean suit and how to get, you know, all these, uh, all these cool, uh, widgets, if you will, between one place. Oh and another. It, it, yeah, it was neat. It was, it was a great experience. That's fascinating. I guess that's where you began kind of like that analytical brain. Cause that must be very, that's, that sounds very specific, but let's go back to what you said. Do you think it's like that today where you can go to the largest company and see where that kind of leads us? You know, it's interesting. I don't, I don't know. And and Mm -hmm. I haven't, um, and I haven't really seen a lot of people desire to go back into these large companies anymore. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know that that's really true. And I'm not even sure that there's a huge demand. Um, I think people are really starting to value their time. Um, They're starting to really value who they work with. Uh, There's so many options now that you can be a contractor. um, Mm -hmm. You know, when I was first getting started too, I don't really know that I could have easily gone out and gotten health insurance very easily. I mean, it's just uh, things so have changed so much that you can be much more flexible. It's so true. I know. So I was thinking the same thing when you were speaking. I'm like, the health insurance is a huge thing for lots of lots of people, especially now. Yeah. yeah. So and I love that. So now, okay. So that, now tell me how you then transitioned into what you're kind of doing now, because I know right now you support companies and how do you support them and how do you understand what they even need? Yeah. So when I uh, left Motorola, I went to go get my MBA back East and the job I got out of um, my MBA program was doing management consulting on the East coast. And so that was a really interesting and cool view to be able to work with different companies um, Mm -hmm. at the same time. And that was kind of a a new um, and neat idea. And then, um, and then from there I I took a long journey back into hospitality and real estate um, and then uh, decided that I really do enjoy working with a variety of people in a variety of companies. Um, What I have found is that it's really similar. It's, it's really easy to get pigeonholed and think that one industry or one thing is the only thing, but there's so much that you learn across different companies and different cultures and different ways of doing things and different ways of thinking that it's just super um, to kind of take those things and and really um, create some really neat uh, team dynamics and ways of doing things. It's amazing because there is a through line regardless of what the industry is, which I think is interesting because kind of culture is culture, right? So creating a healthy, yeah, creating that healthy culture is what's incredibly viable regardless of what industry you're in. Yeah, I think it's super important for our leaders to embrace uh, being collaborative, um, you know, allowing yourself to be um, open to people's feedback, whether it's folks that are um, equals or above or below. Uh, there's some really interesting perspectives that you can get from a variety of people. Um, being as as transparent as you can in terms of the data and in terms of, of how we um, motivate people. I, mm-hmm. You know, 
always shocking to me when people are afraid to show the numbers or whatever. I mean, at the end of the day, whether you're running a $5 million company uh, to a $500 million company, people that are with you still want to know what are the goals, what am I operating to, and making sure that they've got that visibility into how they're, how they're getting the job done. That they, they makes them feel makes them feel good and, and they want to keep going, you know? No, I, I completely agree. I think that when there is a level of full disclosure and you really embrace everybody, that really is what helps move the ship forward, so to speak. Plus the fact not to, you know, not to be, tr- not to trivialize it, but the information's out there. You can, there's no reason to try to hide it. It's completely punitive because it's out there. Um, when I was in the car business a hundred years ago, that was one of the things we based the concept of our, of our business off of the concept of full disclosure, you know, and at the time it was pretty aggressive, um, you know, showing, sharing the cost, our cost as the car dealer to the customer. But I think it immediately kind of set up this, um, symbiotic relationship and it created a lot of trust. So I love that. Do you help leaders in business create that? Um, do you help? I do. And so it's just, um, and, and so I've got kind of a, I don't know if I would call it a playbook, but it's in terms of making sure that they've got uh, the right culture, which then allows you to get the right people. Um, and then making sure that the right people are able to get uh, the knowledge that they need to get the job done. And then making sure that they've got the technology around them to act as quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, so that it's just a, a really positive environment moving ahead. That's really good. And do you find, um, obviously, it's been very, very well received. So that's, and I'm sure that you must have to shift because I would think that the individual that works in a company just say that's in technology, right? Perceives things very different than the perhaps creative individual in hospitality. It just seems to me that even though there's a through line that, you know, you kind of have to be a little bit of a chameleon, I would think. Yes. And at the end of the day, we're all striving to make sure that we hit our revenue numbers, that we are as efficient as possible. So we hit our profitability numbers and that we all enjoy each other while we're doing it. It's, it's pretty simple when you boil it down. It is simple and yet it sounds so difficult. (laughs) It really does. How have you had to adapt with COVID? Yes, I was on the road a lot. And I also spent a lot of time in real estate and hospitality, both of which were hit really hard. So I, you know, started working more in CPG um, and doing some different, uh, some different types of products and clients, different verticals. That's cool. And do you find that, how are you help, helping your clients though adapt during this? Because it seems to me, you know, obviously I work for myself. I work for my home office. It seems to me that that's a huge shift in the, in the cultural dynamic. Yeah, it was, you know, it's, it's been very painful for a lot of people, um, particularly when business leaders had to lay off, um, salaried people. Mm-hmm. On the flip side, if we can see positives and things, it allowed people that are contractors to start to dip their toe into projects or uh, companies that they may or may not have had an opportunity to get their foot in the door to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then sometimes what I found was actually a positive for smaller companies with uh, getting clients and customers is that many times doing these large trade shows or large in-person events is kind of cost prohibitive. And when you can't, it actually levels the playing field and you can compete uh, when it's just over the phone or just over Zoom. So, you know, it, it took some, it took some radical thinking and some, some hustling, but I think those that were willing to, to make that shift um, came out. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. So let's shift if, well, let's I'm using that word. Let's shift a little bit. Cause I'd love to talk a little bit about hello health, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, cool. So why don't you first just tell our listeners a little bit and give a quick little introduction as to exactly what it is. Yes. So at this point, uh, it's just products tailored to brain, gut, and immune health, particularly those with autoimmune autism spectrum and neurodiversity, which is a fancier way of saying ADD, ADHD. Yeah. Um, what I envision and what we're building to is a community. So when I was going through this uh, with one of my kids, it was incredibly difficult to find resources for those that wanted to get to why uh, he was suddenly um, motor, vocal, and mood changed. Mm. Um, A number of doctors just wanted to say he was now autistic and I had to take care of him the rest of his life, but that's not realistic. I mean, there's, there's certainly a why behind it. What I envision is putting together a community of folks that are dedicated to why and 
I think a lot of it starts with proper testing of vitamin levels, um, any genetic markers, any the presence of any infectious um, disease, whether it's bacterial, mm -hmm. viral, fungal. Um, and then, you know, starting to treat each one of those things because it really is a puzzle and then continuing to test in, you know, so much of it is built on blood tests, which is incredibly expensive, painful, yeah. inconvenient. And the technology exists for saliva and for urine. And so I'm looking for folks that we can bring in. Um, I don't necessarily want to go build this, but I do want to collaborate and partner with those that do. And then subsequently provide, you know, this community, these resources of folks that are all committed to helping people feel better from the inside out. That's a solid. How did you learn all of that? Just to try, I mean, I, I, no, because I'm listening to you like, oh my gosh, this woman's brilliant. How did you learn all that? Uh, just lots of, lots and lots of research, lots of doctors, lots of, lots of asking for help. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, cause it's a personal story. So that's another thing that makes it, thank you for sharing that. That's incredible. Um, it's, yeah, health is a very challenging one, you know, and I, I love the concept of what you said, helping people feel good from the inside out. Um, that's really important, I believe. So let's talk a little bit about, so what were some of the challenges you faced when you were, you know, first starting out in, as an advisor, as a consultant, for lack of a better term? You know, I think a lot of people look at someone like me that uh, it's just a cookie cutter. What do you have to offer? What are we going to do? And um, I like to think of each business as like people and each one's different. Each one has their own ways of growing. Um, they look different. They talk different. I mean, it's just a very personal journey, um, even in each business. It's a growing, mm -hmm. breathing thing. And so you've got to continue to give it food and water and, and watch it grow. Uh, but they all grow different. They all look different. So it's mm -hmm. just, that's, it's, it's fun that way for me. So how do you, um, So that's interesting. So I would imagine that there would be, I don't know, a huge, what do you prefer? Or it's a really unfair question, actually. Um, I was going to say, what do you prefer? Like, you know, doing like the startup sector or more like a public company when you're working with, you know, when you're choosing who to work with? Yeah, I've done both. Um, I've done startups all the way up to public companies. And I, I don't necessarily have a preference for the size I do for the culture and for the people. So mm -hmm. I prefer to work with CEOs and their immediate teams when they're mission-driven when it's more than just about the money, um, when they really care about the people, when they really have a mission and a purpose that they're executing to, um, of course, the money is important. But we find that uh, the company and the people and everyone around it thrives when there's um, a purpose, a deeper meaning behind it. And, the, the, and that the CEO is really excited and energized. Mm -hmm. That in turn gets the customers and, and the team members really, really excited too. Do you believe in the philosophy that it it starts from the top down or do you think it's a little bit more? I do. I mean, I, I can't, I've, I've had so many challenges where I've, I've had folks that, that got it at the bottom and I, I couldn't change the CEO. So it, it just was never going to happen. That's really, really hard. And it's also hard when, well, to get back to that, being in business for so many years myself, it's challenging because I, as you said earlier, because the CEO, I believe is so focused on the numbers, you know, and and I don't think people realize that there's many cogs in the wheel that ultimately get you to, to the, to that goal. So I kind of love, so how do you deal with, um, cause you know, there could be like one toxic person that could be very, very challenging for a culture. Yeah. How do you, and, yeah, you've really, really got to be dedicated to coaching that individual and, and really making it clear that this is what, what the challenge is. Uh, this is where we need to be going. Um, and some of that you can get around with KPIs. You know, you can build out the dashboard. You can make sure that you're measuring certain things and being very clear on these are the things that are important in our company and in our culture. And, you know, it, it can be a combination of uh, engagement, um, in, intent to purchase. Mm -hmm. They're purchasing again, feedback, uh, obviously revenue and budget. Mm -hmm. And the, the ability to execute to profit. I mean, there's just a number of things that you can put in there that just make sure that it keeps everyone on the same page. Um, but it also um, ensures that everyone's, you know, rowing the, rowing the boat in the same direction. Well, yeah. And, and holding people responsible, I'm, yes. frankly, right. Holding people responsible so that if something is lacking, you're able to ascertain it quickly and hopefully renavigate. In today's day and age, how important do you, do you, would you say customer service is? 
Uh, very. I will say that uh, as Americans, sometimes we have really, really high expectations um, and very little attention span, which can make it difficult. And so it's uh, yeah, it's it, it's challenging, but it's it's very important. So, well, tell me a little bit more about that. When you say it's challenging, because we have you know <laughs> yeah. small attention span. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, are you doing it through um, feedback surveys? Are mm-hmm. you doing it through the customer service uh, phone number? Are you using a chat service? Are you using, you know, something like Asana or something that allows you to maintain mm-hmm. discussion, whether it's different people, you always know where someone left off. Uh, there's a number of, of things that can be put in place that, that protect balls from being dropped. Some of it, you know, you have to really work at and make sure you've got in place. And some of it, you know, depending on the company is a lot easier. Um, as much as you can connect the financial systems, the operational systems, the feedback right. loops, I mean, all of that is, is uh, helpful when they all integrate with each other. So that's part of what you do to create this kind of holistic approach to everything. Yeah. I mean, let's take a look at what the goal is. Mm-hmm. Um, let's take a look at what our current pain points are. Let's take a look at where we're winning, where we feel really good. And then let's just make sure we've got the right people, the right ways of doing things and the right technology to support them. Now, do you you ever take on clients just like individually as a personal brand or? Yes. Yeah. I have a couple of C-level women that I'm coaching right now. One is a startup and one is a publicly traded company. And so it's just, it's, it's fun Mm -hmm. them along their journey. And sometimes there's similarities and sometimes there's not, you know, right or wrong. I I see a lot of self-confidence, a lot of second guessing, you know, personally, I, I put sticky notes on my bathroom mirror and this is what I want this month. And, you know, and it comes to fruition. No, I love that. And I'm curious, and I don't know, once again, if this is a fair question, but do you find sometimes that being in the car, let me rephrase that being in the car business, one of the things I talk about was that there actually was a lot to learn from men. Men mm-hmm. ask, men ask for the sale, men ask for the day off, men ask for the clothes. Um, and, and, and they have a certain, many of them have a certain level of confidence that sometimes I feel as a woman, many of us do not. Would, would you agree with that statement? Yeah. I mean, I think it's really important to continue to validate yourself and to meditate it in the morning. You know, if you do any sort of cardio or stretching or meditation or yoga or whatever it is, make sure that you've got yourself set for the day and that you are feeling strong and that you are asking, you know, people are not mind readers. Uh, some no. people like to go for the juggler and some people don't, but at the end of the day, you've got to maintain your boundaries and keep, and keep on your own. No, I appreciate that. And I think it's interesting too, because I do believe in the whole mind body connection. I think that strong body, strong mind, I think it's really important. I don't think people really kind of realize um, how viable that, that really, really is. So let's talk a little bit about how important it is to keep innovation for companies. How do you, how do companies go ahead? Yes. Innovation is super important. So the hard mm-hmm. part is, you know, uh, startups are constantly innovating uh, folks that have been around for a while you know, you might start to rest on that 80-20 rule and realize I'm getting Mm -hmm. 80% of my revenue from 20% of the products. And so I think a lot of it comes down to making sure that you've got a really good group of folks around you that are pushing you, whether that is an association, whether it's a uh, mastermind group. Mm -hmm. But if you are getting 80% from your 20%, well, you know, let's, let's, let's get rid of the others. And then let's think about why are those 20 working and how can we innovate around that? And just continually wanting to learn and push yourself is, is tough. But if you can surround yourself with people that, that want to help you on that journey, that really helps. Yeah, it is tough. And I think that there's a very delicate balance between feeling like you need to be part of quote unquote, the grind Mm -hmm. and pushing yourself. Would you agree with that statement? It is. I mean, you know, we all get tired. I mean, how often do you want to continue pushing, pushing, pushing? But if you can start to balance yourself out and outline a, you know, two or three days a month where you start to think a little bit more creatively or maybe creating an innovative group within the company where they can start to think about new ideas and post those, allowing yourself to take that feedback though. And hearing feedback is really hard. Yeah. Yes. It can be very challenging. Go ahead. And and who wants to give it to the CEO? (laughs) Well, I was just going to say that. And that, yeah, who? <laughs> Aside from who the, advisor, the board of directors and the mastermind group, there's very few. It's hard. It's very hard, but it's, but it's imperative. Like, you know, like we just said earlier, because it's, it's really, it's the heartbeat of the culture. 
So yeah, I love that. So there was, um, so what are you currently working on? Is there something new that you're currently working on that we need to, that you'd like to share? Oh, that's a great question. Um, no, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm continuing to work with different companies, different C levels in terms of my own creative juices, uh, with hello health that, that takes a lot of my, my creative energy, which is fun. Uh, we've got a couple mm-hmm. new products that are launching there. One of the more innovative ones is everyone I know and their mother is taking collagen. And it's great. I mean, you definitely want collagen mm-hmm. in your system, but most of them are taking it through like a smoothie or something that you digest where it gets stuck in your digestive tract. And, you know, again, going back to my purpose and my vision is to get to the why on things. And so we're actually launching a project that helps your body produce more collagen rather than just sticking it in there. So. This is a, uh, a vegan sea moss product, which has 92 micronutrients that help your body produce more collagen. So I love that. Thank you. I'm really excited about that one. That's like, fascinating. Probably, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Wait, when is it coming out? What did you say? Uh, two to three weeks. So around the end of October. So how do we, are, are we allowed to talk about it? What it's called? Yeah. I mean, are, yeah. yeah. It'll be on it, our website. It'll be on Amazon. <laughs> Um, and then we're also going to roll it out in Kroger's marketplace, Giant Eagles. Um, Yahoo has a new marketplace that we just joined. Um, uh, Walmart.com. Yeah, it'll be all. That's up. amazing. What is it called? Uh, CMOS Plus, because it also has bladder rack and mm, bladder rack. Yeah, that's am- well, that's amazing. I mean, coming from the, you know my background is in skincare, huh? so I'm all for it. <laughs> I'm all for it. That's amazing. I love that. That's yeah. so exciting. How long were you working on that for? Uh, a while, but I'm getting yeah. better. I'm getting better. I mean, it, it took me years to get here. And so I'm, I'm getting faster. <laughs> uh, yeah. But sometimes things are a process. I mean, I, I, I know for myself, it's, it's difficult to, um, to be patient, but don't you, but sometimes we kind of have to, um, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, sometimes the universe just kind of pulls you back and pushes you forward when it's ready. So I don't know. Well, it seems to me like, this product's going to be great. Yeah, thank you. I'm super excited. I mean, who doesn't want healthier joints, healthy aging, anti-inflammatory? Uh, it's great for the immune system. It's great for the immune system. There's so many things out there, especially now with what's happening, you know, obviously with many people suffering with their immune system. People, I don't think people really understand. Um, there, there's so many natural ways to really garner good health. You don't need all that other, I mean, I shouldn't say things like that, but you know what I mean? Well, when we first went through this with our son about, gosh, it's almost 10 years ago now, one of the first things she said, she was born in Asia and educated in, at, um, in California, UCLA, had a really cool background. And uh, first thing she says is, well, we need to clean up his gut. And I'm like, oh. I mean, that was new news back then. And her idea of cleaning up the gut, which has now been validated uh, among thousands of families, which is pretty super, is not only putting the good stuff in, which is your starch resistant prebiotics, uh, probiotics that are good for the gut brain access, but also taking the bad stuff out. So using Mm -hmm. your, you know, to take out bacteria, all of leaf extract, take out viruses, cinnamon takes out fungi, making sure that they work in tandem. So you're putting good in, taking bad out. It's super important for the immune system. And then, you know, now finally new news, even though it's been around for a long time is Uh, 90% of your neurotransmitters, which are things like your serotonin for your happiness and dopamine for sleep and for calm and whatever, Mm. it's all managed in your gut and your small intestines. Mm. You can keep your gut healthy. uh, All of a sudden you start to feel better and not feel so wishy-washy. And it's fascinating. I've always been intrigued by that. There was actually a a documentary out called, I think it's called the little brain. Have you ever watched it? Uh -uh, I'll check it out. Oh, you have to. It's It's basically about this, how, you know, there is secondary brain is in our gut yeah i love it was, yeah because so hence this the same when when people say listen to your gut it's really more than what you know <laughs> there is something to that for sure <laughs> yeah i love that i love that. i think it's fascinating well i can't i'm definitely going to keep my eye out for that <laughs> I, who doesn't want more collagen and so where can people find out more information about you and your projects and yes. get in touch with you My consulting company, Strategic Growth Advisory, it's Mm strategicgrowthllc.com. And the supplements are Hello Health. And that website is www.hello.health. There's no .com in there, just .health. (laughs) Oh, I love it. Wonderful. Well, it's been wonderful uh, speaking with you today. Thank you so much. You're, You're pretty astonishing. And I can't wait to try your product. 
Oh, Laura Lee, you're amazing. Thanks. I appreciate that. Thank you everyone for joining us today. And thank you so much for listening. If you like the show, please remember to subscribe and leave a review. If you want to learn more about the business serum or me, follow me at Laura Lee Batsakis. You can also find me on the World Wide Web at www.lauraleebatsakis.com. Thank you so much and continue closing yourself on you. Thank you.